Hey everyone, this is Lucky70x. Welcome back to Let's Play The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass. In the last episode, we've got a bunch of ship parts from salvaging and made a bunch of money. So now that we've come into so much, such ridiculous amounts of money, I'm going to start making regular uh, pit stops to Beetle, generally uh, when it's convenient at the beginning of the episode, so we can check his ship part inventory. Uh, right now he has a stone chimney, which we already have unfortunately, and a spike handrail. This will go off the demon ship, so it's under only 150 rupees. Yeah, I have uh, basically our, our handrail and our prow go together, so if we had a third one from that set, we would be able to get um, another extra heart, because you need three of a set. We have our uh, a set with our cabin, our chimney, and our wheels right now. Although, that being said, do want to get a replacement for the wheel at some point, because I have the golden wheel, so... We're going to have to really mix and match. I'm giving this spike handrail, though, because it's 150 rupees. I can replace the uh, chain handrail with that, and then we'll have two of the demon set and two of the sort of utility construction set. So if I get one of either of those um, for my cannon or my anchor, I can then get us to have six hearts from there as well. I, or I guess the boat, you know, if I get the, the, the utility, you know, boat, and or the, uh, can, or the demon prow, then I will be able to make a set as well and get us up to six hearts even quicker. So if they're cheap like this, expect me to switch them out. I just want to go to Mercy K Island really quickly just to switch it out because spike handrails are cool. And I just really want to take the time to do this because I am a goof. So uh, as you can see, it's all the way down here. And now we have demonic spike handrail. What the heck is this creepy boat that we have like the most artistic looking cannon? All sorts of other crazy stuff. We're just an abomination. Also, something I realized in between episodes, you can go left on the collection screen and all your fish are here. How did I not know that? How was I not, how did I just completely, so that's where the, the big catch alert shows up, by the way. I've only caught four fish because I've kind of run away from all the other ones. I mean, I could probably get fish and turn them in for stuff, but meh. I'm just gonna look for, to snipe uh, specific parts off of Beetle. Assuming I don't just get around to party, but there's lots of treasure maps to get parts still, so. The odds of us getting the seven hearts at this point, especially already having a golden part, Extremely high, because if the golden part ever shows up in Beetle's shop, I am nabbing it, and it will be all ours. In the meantime, we're going to head up for one last minigame before we continue the plot today, but uh, despite that, we're actually going to end up at the next dungeon by the end of this episode, I would hope at least. So let's get the ball rolling as we head up here and head to Bannon Island once again. That fish is so nearby, but I know it's going to be heading in the other direction. Yeah. I'm not gonna bother chasing it right now. Um, we have enough stuff to do this in, the episode, in this episode, and I've done enough fish things for now. Look at this boat. Just, just look at this boat we have right now. I just, I don't have words for it. I don't, I'm not sure how much I like the spike handrails actually, but eh. we have a drill, and we're, we're like a castle on hell with a drill. I don't. You can quote me on that one. Just, that's just the story of our life right now. Um, is there, is there any reason I was trying to think if there's there any reason for me to go to Mr. Fisherman Guy, but I do not believe there is. So, let's head over here where uh, our final side quest thing awaits. I've been holding off on this for quite some time, for a good reason, as this remembers. We need uh, the power to, sh to shatter rock. Good thing we have that with our bombs. So, uh, we can get through here finally and see what's on the other side of the island today. Very exciting. Very, very exciting. Hello, bot. You're a bat. Just gonna kind of... Hey, don't be rude. Thank you. Just lots of pots in this area. and We now have three, four, four, four rupees. Sure, why not? So, uh, as far as I remember, there's not really much else here except just grass and other stuff. But we have this guy. It's... I guess this is supposed to be Salvatore from Wind Waker? I would hope so. He's very similar. So he has a minigame for us. Uh, he's gonna give us his usual... Ridiculous explanations. Also, there's treasure chests over there on the island over there. We can't get to them yet, unfortunately. So, he's doing his usual, uh, creative introduction. We are sailing our boat on the seas. We have to prepare to raise anchor. And basically, it's a shooting game. We have to shoot targets. And if we get the high score by hitting up targets, we will get rewards. Kaboom! Oh, Salvatore, I miss you. So, uh, if you obliterate the target, you get 100 points for blue targets. However... There are also red targets. These ones you can hit uh, as many times as you want. Every time you hit it, you get 20 points. So 100 for breaking blue targets, 20 points every time you hit a red target. Your ship will be on autopilot. You will uh, not be able to control it other otherwise. Uh, and you have to get 2,500 points before the end of the course. So 
actually not that hard. Um, considering all you're doing is just tapping targets, it's not really particularly tough. As you can see, though, it puts us in this uh, upper left corner of the screen. However, we can't actually take advantage of that to get the treasure that's over here. Well, that only happens when we uh, are able to circle around later, way later in the game, so... Make sure you never miss a 100, but otherwise spam as many as you can on these 20 targets and get oodles of points. Then just be ready to hit a 100 target and basically just kind of do this pattern where you keep hitting them, wait for it to get past, and then turn, hit that target, turn to the next one, continue to go on, so on, so on, and so forth. So yeah, uh, you will eventually be able to make it over here though uh, to do that. That's generally what this... Oh, I'm missing a lot of that target. That's not good. Let's make sure... Oh god, I missed the blue. Ah, uh, that's gonna make it really hard to get the high score now. I missed two blues. Okay, no. No. We're just... No. This is just... This is... This is a bad... This is a bad run! Okay, I gotta actually focus here. Thanks for... You have... Why are you... You know, you're running this, a business out here, and you're just kinda like... Why are you running, running a business out in the middle of nowhere? Why'd you block off your entrance to a business with a, a, a wall? This is bad business design, sir. I'm sorry. Okay, if I fail this time, by the way, I'm going to actually cut to an attempt where I don't fail. But let's actually focus here. Because I feel like I'm bad at tapping and using the touchscreen when I'm talking. It's a condition, I swear. Okay, so... Good, whoops. Kind of prematurely shot that one. Lol, 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 lol. You guys can make jokes. Generally, you can go for... If you want to be like really safe, you can go for five hits on the red for one blue. That tends to work out fairly well, in my opinion. There we go, I got that one. You know, I'm gonna only go for four, I'm gonna play it so that one's safe. I didn't get that one, okay. That's okay, we're in good progress. Five hits and a blue. It works out really well when you do it like that. I'm gonna go for six this time just to make up for the one that I missed before. And watch out, the targets do rotate, it makes them slightly harder to hit. That being said, just keep tapping the target and you will generally be okay for the most part. So, this one, you hit that one quite a few times, turn, and get ready to attack the target over here instead. So you gotta be, I guess I could turn the other way to be a little bit quicker on that, maybe get a little bit more credit, but... Make sure you hit this blue, and then start spamming for the next red. And, uh, 2,500 points is the goal. We are well on target for that now. Uh, as long as I just don't miss any b vital blues at this point, it doesn't really... I almost hit that blue instead. Uh, that would've been kind of funny. But as long as we don't miss any vital blues right now, we should be okay. Uh, consider we already have, like, our, our goal, and I have an entire red target here to hit still. I think we'll be okay. So, I'm gonna get to 2600 up points on purpose, not gonna completely max out my score, because I am gonna run this one more time. Uh, I'm gonna off-screen it, though, or maybe speed up, screen it. Just because I want to show off, uh, what you get afterwards. Because so, uh, if you beat the high score once, you'll get a nice reward. Uh, you get to pick a prize. As long as you beat the high score, all three prizes will be the same at this point. You open it, and you'll get a bigger bomb bag. Uh, because we bought the other one, we now have the biggest bomb bag. We now have the ability to hold 30 bombs. Every time you beat your record, you also get a bonus prize of 20 rupees. So if I go uh, basically play again and get the bonus prize, I'll get my money back every time, as long as I beat my previous high score. That being said, I'll just show off you know, what happens if you play this game in your own time and get a good reward. Um, you'll probably get like a ship part or something good like that. So I am gonna quickly speed through this and uh, just show off what happens just for funsies. Twenty-seven forty. I destroyed this game. Uh, as you can see, you have a lot of leeway in terms of getting I, I may have actually been able to make a, a lot of points for that. So you get a prize for cannon excellence. I think it'll either be a good treasure or a good ship part. And we get ourselves the strange chimney. I actually think that goes with the demon set, um, it would look like. There is an easy way to find out, though, so... And because we beat our that this, we get the bonus prize of getting our money back, basically, so... I mean, holding up the- I mean, there's no reason to go for the bonus prize, because you just kind of- it's 20 rupees, it's pretty much nothing. I'm actually really curious about this now, if, uh, this chimney goes with the demon set. Um, I think that that's- I think that's indicative of the, de the demon set, it's the fifth one down, right? Or, well, I'm not gonna find out with this thing, I'm gonna find out with the... prow. So, one, two, three- maybe. I think I actually- okay, it's three from the bottom. Or there's three empty ones from the bottom, so this is gonna be three or four. 
it's four empty ones from the bottom. So it actually doesn't go up that set, it goes up its own set. So I guess it's like a strange set that we now have a piece to. Oh well, it's still a ship part, and it still could sell for money potentially. Anyways, let's head off this island, and we have some plot to quickly take care of before we uh, begin to wrap up this uh, journey and make it to the next dungeon. So, basically we have the Sun Key now, we got that uh, with our salvage arm. We now head to Malida Island, and from there we can, uh, once we head to Malida, Malida Island, we can use the Sun Key and gain access to the temple that is... Uh, on the un unexplored other end of Malide Island, so very exciting. Let's go ahead and do the our little warpy warp there. Thank goodness for the slate. You can do that. Also, something I haven't shown off yet that maybe I should at some point. Uh, you actually can transition between uh, the southwest map and the northwest map now. By going north, you don't. There's no no turn no uh, tornadoes show up and knock you back. So we can head you know straight from say Mercy Island to the. Uh, we, we can basically head north if we wanted to and not have to deal with any of that stuff, but we have the warps, so there's no real reason to. It's faster to warp generally, unless I'm trying to go to the Isle of Gust specifically, but I'm not. And even then, it's generally still going to be faster to use the warp, so... That's like you going to the Isle of Gust with, from, like, Malida Island, and even then, that's debatable if it's faster or not. So, in other words, um... Not really going to show that off now. I'll show that off at some point, though, but not today. Not today, indeed. Today, we go to Malata Island. This is why I avoided it so much if, when I was doing my salvages. is because as soon as you have the Sun Key trying to go to Malata Island, you have to fight our first shit boss. Which is a fairly easy boss. It has a very obvious weak point in its eye, and we have to just basically, uh... Oh, it's its eye! Come on, it's a Zelda game. His weak spot's to be somewhere on its body. So basically, you don't want to stand still because it'll be able to hit you a lot easier then. So what we're going to do... The uh, strategy, per se, here is to get a little bit closer, and then we're just going to kind of do a thing like this, where we continue to rotate around it, essentially. And throughout the entire time, we're going to keep shooting it in the eye. Hi, buddy. I see you have an eyeball. You do have to get a little bit closer than what the game uh, tells you, or else you will uh, get... You won't, he'll be too far for you to hit, but wait for his eye to come back up, and we'll hit him again. Otherwise, we just kind of keep rotating back and forth here, wait for his eye to open up, peg him in the face again, and otherwise, just every time he shoots out his little green spikies, we just stop him from hitting us. I mean, us, I guess we don't really need to keep moving, you can just stand still. Then again, hey, 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 that's a new message because I have five hearts now, so now I can take one extra hit, ha ha ha. What are you going to do about it, Mr. Guy with an eyeball? Yeah, that's right, nothing. The problem is if you're close like this, uh, if you miss any of the green ones, you do not have a lot of time to react like that. That being said, it makes it a lot easier to hit him in the face. So we just kind of keep this rotation up. Uh, eventually we might actually run out of our route. But as you can see, if we're moving, we don't actually necessarily have to hit the, the green. We can just kind of keep smacking him. And we're close enough to get the kill, and that is how you kill a weird, strange monster thing that for some reason is now here. So, uh... I don't know, that was exciting. We got ourselves our first uh, ship boss taken care of. Yeah, I did all the work. I guess you I guess you navigate the boat. Whatever the heck boat this is anymore. Whatever abomination we've made. But, uh, hey, we're here on Malida Island with my terribly drawn son. And we can now go ahead and make, uh, make our way up to that temple at the top of the island. And it'll be extremely exciting and extremely awesome. As you can see, by the way, this shop no longer sells Courage Gems, uh, it's, it's just the one, so... It, for some reason, they have Courage Gems, but if you buy one in one shop, the other shop sells out as well. I don't really know how that works. Hey, do you know your husband's a jerk? Oh, so now he want now apparently, uh... Apparently Romano has been inspired. Is there anything new? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure this, uh, the happenings in here hasn't happened yet now. Things are still just normal, but... He, uh, he apparently went to the real highway, and apparently he approves of his dad. Did you know your dad's being lecherous with a mermaid right now, who's not actually a mermaid, and he's been giving me stuff for fish? He's not really a person to emulate, man, but whatever. So, uh, he's trying to figure out his own way. We're gonna get back to Romano later, though. He actually will become important fairly, fairly soon, but... For now, uh, if you remember correctly, we need to head to his hideaway, because that's how you get to the sun door. And his hideaway is actually, uh under that tree right there. So once again, dig a hole, and we can just quickly make our way to the sun door and get through this time. You are a guy 
I do not approve of. Let's keep our boomerang on for now because I think we're going to need it in a bit anyway. So we head over here. The sun door should be right here, and indeed it is. And we can now progress further into Malida Island. But really, there isn't too much to do uh, to get to the temple. It's actually fairly quick. There is another pathway over there that you saw. A pathway that was fairly easy to get to, because all we need to do is dig another hole. And from there, uh, we'll end up on that pathway. And you'll get yourself a Wisdom Gem. So, cool. We got another Wisdom Gem. Um, out of curiosity, what, what are we standing at right now in terms of our gems? Uh, eight, four, five. Sounds about right. I think you get five Wisdom Gems and five uh, Courage Gems before the, the major game-changing events that always occur after you get the first three MacGuffins in a Zelda game. And uh, we have eight Power Gems, which is exactly what we're going to need, because that means by the time we're done, we actually are going to be really close to being able to get our, our first uh, Spirit Power very, very soon. So, exciting stuff there. You're a guy. What do you want? You smack him with his sword. Just rude. Oh, this is the guy who actually tells us about Osha's home and uh, how it has a, a treasure map outside. So I kind of cheated and got that one a bit early, but that was just for the sake of having a salvage episode where I could take care of like half the game's salvages in like one episode. Well, probably not half. I, th I think there's... That's about half. I mean, that's maybe like a third to a half. I forget exactly how many treasure maps are in this game. Probably like mid-twenties, I would say. But, uh, but yeah. Well, let's go this way and avoid the bird. Get my map shocked again. But basically what we're going to be doing here is we're going to be looking for a, a puzzle of sorts. Only statues can or urge the temple's door open, so focus their light gaze on it. Actually, fairly not that difficult, because if we keep heading all around the island, we'll find these statues. And we will be able to uh, hit them to make them do a beam of light, which you can see on the screen. So what we need to do then is if you tap them, we can then rotate them. And all we need to do is rotate, as you can see the, can see the light, you want to rotate so it's touching the temple door. Like so. And there's three of these, and uh, once we have all three of them, we will be able to fight these guys. Okay, we have company. Hi, buddy. Oh, probably should do that. I wonder if the bombs will blow up it. You know what, let's just do this the old-fashioned way. Except every time I do this, they try to... I hate these guys, I really do. Ooh, this is gonna be mean, though. Boom! That was just awesome! That worked out really well, and that's another 40 rupees for me. Well, looks like I got the last laugh after all! Ha 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 ha! So, this one will beam straight down, but we can once again rotate it a few degrees, and, uh... It'll end up pointing straight upwards, so... I think, uh... Whatever, how many rotations it takes? Six? And that's pointing at the light, and then we just need to get one more. So at this point, we've done a full rotation of this section of the island. If we jump down here, we're basically back to where we started um, with this part of the island. But if you actually look over here, you'll find the last thing. That being said, there's no way to get to it, but it's already facing the right direction. All we need to do, actually, is hit it. And we actually have a tool to do just that, the boomerang. With that, all three lights are now facing the door. And with that, we have access to the... Uh, the temple already. This actually went way faster than I thought it would, so guess we're actually getting a uh, somewhat shorter episode for once, which is kind of a nice change of pace, I suppose. Um, I'm trying, just trying to think if there's, any, if there's literally anything else that was worth doing uh, in this video. Not really, so I guess, uh, yeah, I guess we head inside and we just we call it a short episode. Man, this I, this section really is quickly to get, you can really go from like pretty much almost straight to the second temple to straight to the Temple of Courage. And we're here, guys. So, for now, this is Lucky70X, signing out. I'll see you guys in the next episode of The Legend of Zelda Phantom Hourglass, where we take on the third temple of the game. This one's quite a doozy, but uh, it's really fun. I actually kind of like this temple a lot. So, we'll tackle this one in the next episode. I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye. Alright, since that was such a quick video, I thought I'd just go ahead and load my backup file and quickly show off the thing that I meant that, uh, as you can see, if you are going to the Northwestern Sea, when uh, you're in the Southwestern Sea, you will no longer be assaulted by tornadoes. You will just make it through uh, perfectly normally, and thus you do have free reign. Like I said, the slate is still by far the superior option, but it's an option nonetheless. So, as you can see, no problem hitting the sea. We can kind of just head off here if we so choose, but that's just kind of the way it goes. So, uh, that's how that works. So, once again in the next episode, we'll see you guys in the Temple of Courage. It's going to be awesome. So, thought I'd quickly throw this in at the end. Oh no, an enemy! Ah! Bye. Oh, come on, really? There. Bye.